Well, hey there, folks. Welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here. It's time for another beer review, and we are doing our Vocation Brewery Showcase Part Two. Uh, going through some beers that I picked up from my last beer haul from Vocation, actually. Now, if you're brand new to this channel, welcome along to the Hop House. We call that because we like hoppy beer, we like house music. We're on the beer side, but if you like either of those or both, then give us one of those. Give us a like, share, subscribe to this channel. If it's sort of your cup of tea, if you like either of those elements. You ready? Okay. So next up then, um, I've just done the vocation um, because they announced some anniversary editions of the Life and Death. So we've just done the Session Edition. Quite nice actually. Only 3.5%. Pretty decent. And next up, um, it's a style that I've sort of fallen back in love with over the last 12 to 18 months. You'll see if you've seen some of the other beer reviews. Uh, best bitters, yes. It's where it's 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 where I came from. It's still there, you know. I'm going back to my roots. Yeah. So I started off um, when I was a wee lad. I used to like a pint of Tetley's, pint of John Smith's cask when it was good before it got shafted by big brewery companies. Uh, but I guess that's what's going to happen, and I think it's going to happen more and more. I mean, look at what's happening to the Marston's brand. You know, Carlsberg Marston's, they've shut down um, Jennings Brewery, they've shut down Witchwood Brewery, and it's all just been brewed at one or two sites. Business-wise, I get it, it makes sense, but they're only keeping certain branded beers that is good for marketing. Again, it's good business sense, but it's not good for people that are losing their jobs and this, that and the other. You get the idea. Anyway, I'm going on a bit of a downer here, aren't I? Trying to bring us up, let's bring us up. So best bitters then, it's the style that I know that craft beer, uh, craft brewery, sorry, uh, uh, sort of getting into. Vocations done some, I've got a couple of others uh, in my beer box out there from a few other breweries. ESB's best bitters. Uh, maybe modernising it slightly, but you know, going back to your roots. Because that is one of the beer styles that this country is famous for. It's pretty good if you get it right. Do you want to see what we're going to review? Okay, vocation then. And it's this. Devil's Leap Best Bitter. Now, I'll be honest with you. I was doing this whole intro on my camera. And I totally forgot what this was in relation to. So, I stopped. So, there's going to be a little mini video prior to this that I'm going to delete. Forever. Because I totally... not It blanks my mind. Basically, this here... They call it the Devil's Leap, and that is the, the top of Studley Pike, or Studley Pike. Um, it's on top of one of the moors between Mythen Royd, uh, Hebden Bridge, and uh, Todmorden, which is basically not far from where the Vocation Brewery, that's where they are, uh, on a moor outside of Hebden Bridge. So, when I first did the first blooming thing, I said, I can't remember the name of this damn thing, it's a top of some more so um, I paused the video I sat down and I was about to google it and I went stupidly pike <sighs> my mind's going early on in sort of, uh, early onset of dementia hope not Christ I'm only 41 right there you go then that is Devil's Leap Best Bitter Sorry, uh, ABV wise, 4.3%. I went off on a tangent there. I do that quite a lot. Should we get it out into the glass? Right. I'm using a purity glass for this because it is still overall my favourite pint glass. Even though every now and again, because it's a glass that I put over there in my everyday use cupboard, that's a bit more like niche glassware cupboard. I've got cupboards for my glassware. Need to sort that out. Um, but yeah, my missus sometimes makes this and she goes, oh, it's my favourite glass. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't. Oh, no. Ooh, a bit frothy. Let's hope it's not too frothy when we pour it out. Not too bad. Not too bad at all, actually. Not a bit of that. Wee, that'll do. Great head. This glass is infamous for not to not giving head <laughs> right so there we have it it's clear and see-through I'd expect nothing less it's a best bitter at the end of the day um, it's quite light actually for a best bitter now, now if I hold it up more away from 
the camera, you're probably getting it a bit darker. I'm getting this these spotlights booming down on it. So it is um, dark amber, sort of coppery colour. Nice fluffy white head on it. Clear and see-through. Doesn't say that this is a particularly can conditioned beer, unless now I pour it in and it is. No, it's not. Um, so you know what? I probably wouldn't expect that. Best bitters I've had over the years, not exactly. Apart from the odd one or two, they're not cloudy or hazy. They're, they're sort of, they're like this. They're clear and see-through. I'm going back to my roots, as I said. Um, that looks stunning. Quite like that. I have no complaints about that whatsoever. It's a wrong time. Let's stick that into there. We'll give it a whiff. See what we can say. I've got like a nutty, bready vibe, and then like, like a bit piney, because it's got New World hops in it. It's not what I was expecting. Sorry, I'm a bit sniffly. I've just um, recovered from about man flu, but I have got still got a sense of uh, smell and taste, so we're okay. Pepperiness, bitiness, brambly, hedgerow hot. There is like a, almost a little bit of pine in the background though. It's not, it's not massive, but it's there. But yeah, I'm getting the, the maltiness from a best bitter. Well, let's give it a try. So I'm waffling. Bottoms up, down the hatch. Cheers. out of the can maybe it's a little different a little weird I bet that on, if they did that on cask I'm sure they do I bet if you go to maybe not now they released this like in August but I bet if they did this on cask in the um, vocation taps I bet it was excellent it, it's definitely best bittery but the more now I'm getting the, yeah, it does taste a bit piney. I've got the dry bread down the middle of the tongue. Definitely dry bread, like a dry, it's not, it's not a toasty bread. It's like dry white bread, no butter on, straight down the middle of the tongue. Down the sides of the tongue, like an apricot, marmalade -y. And then at the back end, you're getting like peppery spicy notes. But then like a pine, I am getting a pine needle from it, which is, you know, you get from the best bitter. It's, it's, a, it's a new take on a best bitter, it is. Now if I was expecting it to be a bit more traditional, I'd expect maybe some Demerara sugar down the middle of the tongue, or some slightly sweeter bread biscuity, but the the malt side of it is dry. It's it's really quite dry. It's, there's not really much sweetness in that beer, unless my man flu is taking it away from me. But it's it's quite bitter and piney, and there's definitely a marmalade vibe going on when it goes down the sides of your tongue. But at the back end, it's, it's quite bitey, it's brambly, peppery. But yeah, I'm definitely getting pine, pininess from it. Let's have a look and see what it says. Excuse me. So it says, one Yorkshire legend inspires another, combining Hebden Bridge folklore with an icon of British beer. 
uh, brewed to traditional recipes using 100% British malts. Take the leap. What's the matter? Afraid you might fall for it? So it says malty, bramble and floral. Uh, the malts include caramel and crystal. Uh, it gives this best bitter a bright copper hue and a malted sweetness. So I'm not finding that sweet. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm finding it quite dry. Dry bread, like white bread dry. Needs some butter on it, sort of thing. Um, anyway, delicately hot for rounded bitterness. Subtle floral notes and a touch of spice. It says pearl and mosaic. So there you go. That's probably where the pininess is coming from. The mosaic. And I should imagine that that has been um, kettle hot rather than dry hot. So it's in the boil. And that Do a bit of laser vision. Sorry, I've not done the laser vision ever. Uh, and then I'll rate it. There you go, there's a laser vision. For those that love the lacing. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Definite brambly. Definite sort of tart marmalade. And then that definite pine. But I'm not getting any sweetness from it whatsoever. It's real dry. It's a dry. It's even got a dry finish. Finish, dry finish. And I'm a bit like, oh. I like it though. I do. It's um. It's not as refreshing as a best bitter can be because I would expect a little bit more caramel sweetness in the malts and then the, the bitterness to take over. It is more bitter and hop forward, but I appreciate it, I like it. Certainly got a lot of flavour going on. I'll give it, I've got another can of it. Would I buy it again? Yes. Would I like to try it on cask? Definitely. I'll give it a thumb up. It gets a thumbs up from me. Don't even give it any more because I would expect maybe a little bit more caramelly sweetness and the malts and I'm not getting that it is really dry bready but um, I like the pininess I like the idea that they've used some uh, new world hops alongside these caramels that they're stating are there that I'm not really tasting that much but you know what it's decent it's a thumbs up from me like share subscribe tough for watching maybe we've got like one or two more ciao for now people we'll crack on with the next one see ya